morning, everyone. Welcome to those in the sanctuary and those joining us on social media as we worship on this first Sunday in Lent. We do have several announcements this morning, and first, I'd like Rachel to come up, please. Good morning. I want to invite all of you to come back to church on Wednesday evening at 530 for a dinner for the Kenya Project. And each year we have been going to Kenya, and I wanted to share information with you if you don't know about Mountain Park Academy and the Kenya Project at that dinner on Wednesday night. This is one of the two fundraisers we'll have for our mission trip May 28th. So we would love to have you come. Uh, the dinner will be catered, so I need you to make a reservation on the form that's in your bulletin so that we will have a good number to make sure that we have enough food but not too much food. So thank you very much. Thank you. You know, please note uh, in the bulletin of the upcoming schedule for the season of Lent and also the single mingle ministry they have several activities going on this month in march so please make a note of that as well and now i'd like to ask gwen to come up good morning everybody great to see you for those of you who don't know me i am gwen scarf and i am one one of the stephen ministry leaders and this morning we have the joy and privilege of commissioning a new Stephen leader to our group. If I could ask the ministers and the, and the new leader to come up, please. Every Christian is called to care for others. And our Stephen ministry is a powerful way several of us have committed to living out that goal of care. Today, we're specifically recognizing our newest Stephen ministry leader, one who organizes, teaches, supervises our Stephen ministers. These ministers are trained caregivers who provide high quality one-on-one -on -one care to hurting people in our congregation and community. Betty Ann Archer, has been trained as a Stephen Ministry Bridge Leader at the training course that it was online this summer. And we have asked her to serve as a Stephen Leader. She is a gift from God, <laughs> as are all of our Stephen Ministers. A, a, a lot of people couldn't come today, so I apologize for that, but we are a, a hearted, heartedly unified representation. As a part of the priesthood of all believers, I'm asking the congregation to believe with us that all of us Christians are called to offer ourselves to the Lord in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us in Jesus Christ. It is also our privilege to recognize and support those who are trained for specific ministries in this congregation. Because of your gifts, your calling, and your training, we charge you, Betty Ann, with the following responsibilities. I would really like the congregation to listen carefully to this because I've been in this a long time and I still have people coming up to me and saying, what do you do? So if you listen carefully, this is very specific today. The first thing she and the, all of us Stephen leaders do is to spread the word about our Stephen ministry, educating what it involves and casting a vision for it, this crucial ministry. Number two, to carefully recruit, select, and train congregation members with gifts, talents, and characteristics to, stir, to serve as Stephen ministers. Third one, to draw on the resources of our congregation and the community to enrich the training and supervision of Stephen ministers in this congregation. Number four, 
to work with the pastors to identify members who could benefit from this confidential ministry. Number five, to match hurting people with Stephen ministers based on what will best meet their needs. And number six, to supervise these confidential caring relationships and offer opportunities for continuing growth in these skills and practices. Betty Ann, will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you nurture these skills you have learned and use them to serve others, to support, encourage, and build up people while trusting in God's healing? Yes, with the help of God. Praise God. <laughs> Members of the congregation, will you open your hearts to the ministry of this Stephen leader and all of the Stephen ministers and pray for them as servants of Christ? Pastors, if you would stand up, please. Will you lift up the ministry of these trained Stephen leaders by communicating support for those who need the kind of care, encouraging people with the appropriate gifts to serve as Stephen leaders and Stephen ministers and helping our Stephen ministry have the resources it needs to thrive, thereby helping to equip, equip the saints for ministry. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious God, you have called these people to a new path in caring ministry. You have gifted and empowered them for this task. Grant them joy in their service and the spirit of bold trust in you that their ministry may stir us to greater caring and more fruitful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of this ministry so that your people live in peace and that your good and gracious will be done through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Glenn. And that concludes our announcements and ceremony.
please stand for the responsive greeting. When disasters strike, where can we go? When enemies surround us, whom can we trust? When life is hard, who can ease the load? Come, let us worship the God of our salvation. Let us pray. Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus our Lord. Come, all who are weak, taste the living water that I shall give. Dip your hands in the stream, refresh body and soul. Drink from it, depend on it, for this water will never run dry. Come, all who are thirsty, says Jesus our Lord. Amen. Good morning. If you will turn to hymn number 2140 in the smaller hymn, I see most of you have it. And we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 5. 1, 2, and 5. <laughs> standing as we state our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into Thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I 
Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. I was wondering if I was going to get anything. Have you ever heard of a taste test? Anybody up here? No? I got one yes. Well, some people think they have an extra, extra keen sense of taste. That means that when you eat two things that are very much alike, they can taste the difference, can like a brand of ice cream because it went like like Manila ice cream when it tastes. Manila, I love Manila ice cream. Yes, yeah. that is a great one. So, anyway, um, people have very sensitive taste buds. You know what taste buds are? You know where they where taste buds hang out at? Yeah. They're right on your tongue. The little bumps on your tongue are your taste buds, and that's how you know if you're eating spinach or chocolate cake. Did you know that? Yes, when you taste like the, like the ice cream, you taste like the chocolate. So you would know the difference between chocolate. It, it got um, a little bump because of when you bump. You might have chocolate chips in that for the bump. Well, anyway, there are some people that think, what are these? m and There are some people that think they have such good taste buds that they can tell the difference in the different colors of M&Ms. So we have green and blue and yellow and red. Somebody could taste the difference between a red M&M and a blue M&M. Can you believe that? Yeah. Do you think we yeah. should ask somebody if they can come and because test? When the taste let's let's like ask somebody out taste. there. Does anybody want to come be a volunteer to see if you can tell the difference? Do we have a volunteer, Sam? Yeah. Or somebody? <laughs> when you taste white, white a little. Oh, here we go. We got an M&M lover here. I'm surprised um, we didn't have our. Okay. Well, come, come sit with us. Okay. Come over here. All right. So here we go. So you're going to have to close your eyes, and we're going to let you test a blue and a red, okay? Keep them closed. No peeking. No peeking. Okay. Taste one at a time. Keep them close. Mm -hmm. She's trying to peek. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, okay. Ta taste the other one and see. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Can I have another blue and red to try again? <laughs> We're going to give you another one in just a second, uh, but can you, I think what the do you think? I think the first one was blue. Okay. Um, we're going to give you two more. Okay. Okay. Another blue and red. Here's the first, and here's the second. Okay. Did you notice the difference? In the taste? Well, I thought I did at first, but now no. <laughs> Can we say thank you for tasting? So you actually had four colors, so you did not know anything. And you got the first two wrong. <laughs> thank you, anyway. You can stay if you want to. You might get one more packet to take home with you. Okay, so. I think that this pretty much proves that all M&Ms, plain M&Ms, and we have many, many different kinds of M&Ms, but in the plain M&Ms, they all taste the same on the inside because they're all what's on the inside of an M&M. Chocolate, that's right. Aren't you glad, though? There's all these cute, different, pretty colors. Look at all these colors. Aren't they nice? Doesn't it make it fun? Yeah. Give you joy. Cake? I know. You're going to get your own packet, I promise. Oh as soon gosh. as we're done. As soon as we're done. We're almost there. Hang with me, okay? So, the difference makes them fun and good to eat. 
but they're all the same on the inside, right? The Bible tells us something about that same thing is true, and guess what? People, right? It pleased God make races of people who are different colors on the outside, or maybe they have the same color of skin, but they have different eye colors or different hair colors, right? It pleased God to make all the color differences when he created us, right? But does that mean God likes some people better than others? No, he doesn't. He loves everybody just the same, right? He made each one of us to please him, and he loves us all. There is a verse in the Bible, and it comes from Roman 10, 12. Listen to this. Ready? Listen to this. Put your feet down. Come on, sit up here. This is important. This is from the Bible, okay? For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is the Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. There's a song that we like to sing in church and in children's church and in even preschool, and it's called Jesus Loves Little Children. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, and it, this, this is the words to it, and then we're going to sing it together, okay? It says, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Can you sing that with me? Ready? Here we go. Jesus loves the little children. Precious in his sight, Jesus loves the little children of the world. You're singing a bit like that too. Okay, here's your prize for helping us out. Here's your image. Here you go. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> oh, we'll help each other. You run into one of our Stevens ministers. They, they are not ones to want us to applaud for them in worship, but they certainly would appreciate a, a hug, a handshake, um, a moment of, of acknowledgement and appreciation for what they're doing. So if you see one, love on them. How about that? This morning, uh, our prayers are very much for the persons in Ukraine and, and in Russia as well. It's an, an, an unfortunate and unpleasant situation, and so our prayers are for peace. Our prayers are for the end of the attacks and for peace to come soon. Uh, are there other prayers this morning, folks, or things that you'd like for us to pray? Pray for them and all those who have cancer. Yes, sir. All right. Robert Westmoreland.
Yes, Brother Joe. Oh, Jerry. All right. Sir. Yes. Anyway, so we'll pray for her and for all those who died and their families. All right. Are there others? Well, let's pray together. Well, Lord, we are overwhelmed by the circumstances of the world in which we live. We turn in the news and don't know whether or not to look for signs of peace or signs of escalation. Help us to seek those signs of, of hope and promise and ending, of peace and resolution. And we pray that those on both sides who are unclear why they are fighting join our prayers of why. We pray for those who are with us in person and those viewing from home or, from, or as they travel. We come together and we rejoice and share our sorrows and lift our questions and affirm our affirmations. And in all things, we pray that we may always turn to you, that we may find our strength in you, our hope, our endurance, and our peace. We pray for Brian and Joyce and Tony and Brady Rose family, Edward and Jim, Jenny and her family and Bob and all those on our prayer list. We have much in our hearts and much in our prayers. Hear us as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So get your hymnals as we stand and sing hymn number 362, Nothing But the Blood. Thank you. 
Sovereign Lord, let us be forever mindful that all that we have comes from you. As we return a small portion of those blessings, we ask that you guide and multiply these gifts and offerings that will go to those in need, dealing with many uncertainties. In Christ's name we pray, amen. delighted to have Charles Claypool directing for us today, and the choir would like to dedicate the anthem this morning to the persons in Ukraine and Russia.
Our New Testament lesson this morning comes from the 10th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, verses 8 through 13. And as Pastor John will share with us in a moment, may seem simple, but have profound implications for the life of the faithful. Hear these words from God's servant, Paul. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. All who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus, save me. Jesus, who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. Who? Jesus. If he's going to save us, who? Jesus. All right, thank you. Thank you. It's going to take a while to get the crowd going. If this is indeed the good news, then we have joined together with our Baptist brothers and sisters in the core message of their church. You know? Have you been to a Baptist church? Have you heard that verse? If you've been to a Baptist church before, okay? If you've got some Baptist in your story personally, see, look around, look around. That's a typical Methodist church, kind of half Methabaptist. We ought to feel right at home when we hear that verse, that whenever we utter the words, whenever we say that prayer, whenever we claim Christ and proclaim Christ, we are saved. And that is not the end of the story. That is not the end of the journey. That is the beginning point. That is when a couple comes up and they profess their faith and enter into covenant with one another, that they are married, but they don't yet have a marriage. The marriage is what follows after the ceremony is completed. That whenever we call on Christ, he's ready and willing to accept and to receive. But once we do, there comes a change in our attitude, a change in our, in our purpose, a change in the calling of our lives that we are then becoming this new person, becoming this person that Christ died for and lives for, just like we become married. Uh, when someone comes to be baptized or confirmed, they come up to the altar and they water on their head or they're immersed somewhere or poured on, from that moment they are accepted. But from that moment on comes a greater responsibility to respond and to live into that life. Sometimes I like to think of us as, as Christians. Another name would be musketeers. All for one and one for all, right? So reach in there and pull out your sword. Y'all didn't bring a sword to church? Here we go. There you go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All for one and one for all. But once we make that declaration, we are paving our our next step. We're determining what's going to happen next. See, it is great news that, that neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, we're, we're all acceptable in Christ Jesus. But once we're in Christ Jesus, then our heart longs to become like Jesus. 
too often we hear somebody, well, we're just supposed to love everybody and accept everybody as they are without any transformation. Well, like we said for on Ash Wednesday, my sins are ever before me. I know where I'm broken. I know where I struggle. And those always remain. And I have to keep giving them back to God every single day. But we hear that first part like it's a Geico commercial. Jesus died for our sins. Whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And you know what the question after that is? Well, everybody knows that. Well, did you know that once you are in Christ, it means that we're becoming like Christ. We're becoming like the righteousness, the goodness, the rightness of Christ. <clears throat> Paul is calling us to also be bearers of that good news, to be those, and he says later in the chapter, Blessed are those feet who bring the good news. He quotes a reference from the Old Testament, actually. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news. I've always kind of wondered after reading that verse that if we were called Christians or disciples or musketeers, why weren't we also called the people with beautiful feet? Do you like your feet? Are they beautiful? Most people will tell you, I don't think much of feet. They, they do their job. Mine aren't so pretty. And if we had a Maundy Thursday service where we wash feet, we might have people who avoid the service because we don't want anybody coming near our feet. But I encourage you to, to come and attend that service that even if you yourself don't participate in the washing of feet, you look at what Paul was talking about, the act of humility and kindness and, and self-giving to stop and wash someone else's feet. It is a powerful moment. It is a powerful gift to give and a powerful gift to receive. So when it comes around to that service, don't skip it. All right? But in the meantime, we are becoming those who are the beautiful feet because we're the ones who are telling what the good news is. We're telling what, what great work God has been doing in us through Christ and through the Holy Spirit. Our theological neighbors might be happy to stop and just say, as long as they're in, that's all we care about. But I think that is short-sighted. Mr. Wesley would say that we're going on to uh, sanctification and perfection. We're going on to build in this relationship of what it means to be in Christ. And not just in the door, but in love with, in trust with. In the old baptism, I mean, the old uh, communion liturgy, there used to be the word expiation. Have you used that lately? Um, it means to atone. Have you used that one lately? No. It means to make right, to redeem, to restore. We're much more familiar restoring things and redeeming things. I didn't really know what it meant even though I said the word until my fifth grade Sunday school teacher got out the dictionary when she recognized that none of us knew what it meant and we looked it up it became a word that we could use because we knew what it meant knowing what it means to be atoned means that we recognize that from the moment that we accept Christ that we've got work to do work on ourself, work on our attitudes, work on our behaviors, work on, on all that we are. And it's not that we do the work to earn salvation. We've already received the salvation, but it calls us into wanting to become this kind of person that Christ sees in us. And so it's important that we believe in Christ. It's important that we proclaim Christ. It's important that we tell other folks about Christ. But it is essential that we grow in Christ, and we've got a whole season of Lent devoted to growing this part of our relationship. We enter into this <clears throat> at this time that we may have activated that word that Jesus is our Savior, but we have to, to know that. And so that in the things that would swamp our faith, the things that would test our faith, we have to put Jesus and ourselves into the mix and say, do the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart 
do they really stand up when I'm faced with temptation? Do they really hold me through when I'm faced with what I can't provide for myself? And that's where they become real. And that's why we come to this table today. A table set for sinners, not for perfect folks, not for folks who've got it all figured out, not for folks who think they can do it by themselves, but for the rest of us who know that we cannot, without the help of Christ, find our true self and find our way home and become this person and have beautiful feet and have those, be those who bear the good news and be the musketeers that we sometimes are called to be and to follow as disciples and to be all of that, we need this table. And so I invite you to tr turn to page 12 and join me in our service today. Christ, our Lord, invites, uh, page 12, I'm sorry. Christ invites, our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And if you would please continue with me on the opposite page with the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and to death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In which he gathered, he gave himself for us. He took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood that we may for the world be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ and one with each other. One in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Would those who are assisting please come?
are all in need of grace and all welcome. Please come.
Is there anyone who'd like for us to bring the elements to you? as those who are redeemed with beautiful feet, who have good news to tell, and may our lives and the lives of those around us be transformed in Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> 